carbohydrates. I took a little vial, sent it to the lab, 117 parts per million, 118 parts per million nitrogen. That was in the fall. Look at my look at my liquid sun right here. This is why we do covers right here. No food, no aggregates, no structure, no stability, no nutrient cycle. <coughs> cover crops are not optional. I have farmers tell me, well, I don't want to do cover crops. Well, you don't know how this all works, do you? Do you want to make money? Do you want freedom? So you're not so bound by the inputs and reduce them and make money. Learn how this all works. The reason I want those photosynthetic materials leaking, it's these guys. Bacteria start to populate every 20 million minutes. They reproduce every 20 minutes. minutes. You can have oceans of them, billions of them. Once you put the living root, here they come, the factory worker, making structure, making house, making habitat, cycling nutrients. And then here come the gazelles, the, pro uh, the protozoa, and the nematodes to consume them. And when they consume them, nitrogen is released. Anywhere from 18 to 170 pounds of N just through predation. According to Patrick Lavelle, Dr. Patrick Lavelle, I didn't make that up. We don't take that. Now, which producer audience is making money? This is Pennsylvania, by the way. Make me so proud, Pennsylvania. Who's making money? This is Illinois. This is a majority of our country. This landowner is making money. He's capturing the sun. He's holding nutrients. He's getting it ready so he can carry over to the next crop and give it to his corn and to his soybean. This is leaky. This is spilling sun. Now the water cycle. How many of you have seen the big rain simulator? Raise your hand. The big rain simulator. There's a lot of people who have not seen it. That is amazing. Let's talk about the water cycle. To fully appreciate potential runoff and erosion from a conventionally tilled field like this, you really get out here during the most intense thunderstorm of the year. Since most people aren't willing to do that, here in Virginia, we use a rainfall simulator to help our farmers tell the story of what happens when it rains really hard. Now, what does On the left, we start with a tray of dry, loose soil taken from a clean till field. On the right, we start with a slice of intact surface soil from a long-term no-till field. This soil is not only protected with a mulch of cover crop residue, it also has a stable, porous sponge structure. You know, years ago, as a kid, I remember, you know, you'd get these, these big, heavy thunderstorms in the summer, and it would just it would just wash the field and you'd end up with with mud down the road and i'm talking about the open sea loader is way cars could go down the road what i'm seeing now is i'm seeing these heavy rainfalls and i'm barely seeing a trickle coming out of the field after we simulate an extremely intense thunderstorm for five minutes the differences are obvious most of the water we apply to this soil has not into this soil, and with it a thin but very significant layer of topsoil. We just applied an inch and a half of very intense rainfall to bare soil. It's tilled, bare soil. How much water is Obviously, the soil we harvested very very little for future plant use. Meanwhile, this is virtually every drop of water we apply. What little ran off is clear. The bottom line is pretty simple. If you want to harvest more rain like these no-till farmers are doing, keep your soil covered on top and make it a sponge underneath. Okay. Now the reason that's so choppy is because Wi-Fi is talking to that little machine there. Notice here, folks, the moment I pick up a shovel, here's what I want you to do when you go home. I want you to go to your grass waterway, 
you're going to see a lot of aggregation. Get a shovel, dig on your grass waterway. Then I want you to go to your field that you've been working on for years. If you're doing tillage, your field's going to look like this. This soil here was once, this soil here was once this. This is the aggregation. This is the cottage cheese. This is the habitat. This is what keeps the lungs, this is the lungs and the pores of the soil. When you till, you destroy the lungs of the soil and create the crust. That's what you're doing with tillage. That's why that water is not infiltrated. When you walk onto your place, you better see soil like this. Well aggregated. A lot of BBs, a lot of cottage cheese. Those aggregates only last 27 days, according to Dr. Six. You have to be building them and have plants in the system all the time. That's why you cannot beat the forest. That's why we have infiltration rates of 50 inches an hour in the forest. Your grass waterway will always have more infiltration unless you're doing cover crops and no-till. <coughs> this is the habitat. This is the house. This is what I build for. When we write our conservation and nutrient management plans, do we write it all the way down to the aggregate? I would say they're not. Do we take care of, do we account for predation as part of the nutrient cycling when we write our nutrient management plans? I would tell you we do not. But we have new technology now that we can measure those things. The aggregate looks like the ovilia of a human lung. An aggregate is wrapped with fungi, with root, tiny root hairs. Those are tiny sand particles and clays fused together biologically, and the microbes live in the habitat there. You destroy that, you destroy the lungs of the soil. You destroy nutrient cycling. You change everything. <coughs> Very critical to understand that. When I, these are farmers from Australia, they now have a new type of plant food that they feed and they have eliminated chemical nitrogen in their operation. Because chemical nitrogen has a lot of salt. A good, healthy root system should have huge amounts of clumps next to the root, well aggregated. They now use molasses, calcium, micronized calcium, pulverized phosphorus, kelp, and some other things they put into their system and abate the heavy salts, and they, it costs less. Now, when they came from Australia, they said, Ray, you know what you guys have that we don't have? The cover crops. Ben Smith said, I cannot believe we missed the covers. I said, Ben, it's our teaching, the way we learn. That's why we miss it. The cycling part. Again, if you don't have water, you get no cycling. To do this, how many of you use, how many have a shovel and use the shovel daily on your farm? Raise your hand. Some of my top producers take a shovel with them all the time. Chris, you have a shovel, don't you? And the first, the, what's the first thing you do when you walk into an operation? Oh, forget. What, you need to sign the contract. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you pull the shovel out. You pull the shovel out. Why? I want to see this. I pull the litter back. I want to see all the life on top of the surface. If I see no life on the surface, I'm concerned. What is your rotations? Are you spraying too much? What are you doing? Because 90% of cycling nutrients is because of them. They're not present then you're gonna to have to buy more fertility. They do all the fertility. This is a little video showing here fungi and bacteria only, and here's the grinders and the mixers, the arthropods, and all these beautiful critters and the earthworms. If we did not have all of them, fungi and the bacteria and all these organisms, we would be filled with miles of residue. That is nutrient cycling. When you're organic, you disrupt that whole thing. And you haul your compost in. When you no-till and you spray too much insecticides and fungicides, you hurt that system. Then you write another check. We're 
we're saying keep that intact as much as possible. Start rolling your covers. Start doing this and it changes everything. This is why our producers are able to knock their inputs out. Remember, soil is self-healing, self-regulating, self-organizing, just like your body is. Let's make it very clear. Your body can tolerate acute stresses. It cannot tolerate chronic stress. If you continue to drink, let's say one night or a couple of months, you wanted to binge and drink all the amount of copious amount of beer and alcohol, and you ate crappy food, your body will get sick. It will get sick. Same thing with the soil. Soil cannot handle chronic stress. Too much fungicide, too much insecticide, too much tillage, system collapses. Soils can handle an acute stress. Cannot handle chronic stress. Neither can your body. That's why you can tell we have insect problems, pathogen problems, because the self-healing, self-organizing, self-regulating mechanisms are no longer working. Careful of disturbances. So what we're doing is we're taking geology. See right here, this is sand silt without life. This is the biotic substances that coat the particles. Then you have healthy functioning soil. Recent research shows that a majority of organic matter is the dead carcasses of bacteria. See, organic matter is this, ladies and gentlemen. It's not just the fluffy material you see that just got broke down. Organic matter is the secretions, the excretions of life and death. It's urine, blood, saliva. Something died in that soil to make those biotic glues and that structure. They did that. And the moment you disrupt that, you disrupt the whole process. See, most farmers love to compare themselves to organic matter. To me, organic matter is cool, but that's not the end game. There are many pools of organic matter. There's many pools of carbon. To me, it's these super molecules. That's where the party's at. This is what the microbes feed on. I have seen soils with 15, 16% organic matter and no living plant on top of it. Why? Too much carbon in the system, they're not cycling. Be careful how you compare organic matter. And also organic matter changes just like your pulse does. It changes daily, it changes weekly, it changes hourly. It's alive. Okay, how much time do I got? Three minutes, four minutes, done? Okay. Folks, we'll leave it with this last slide. When you walk in the field, it's, you can't see the delineation. But these are two fields right next to each other. Treat it very differently. You can see the mosaic colors here because the structure is not intact. It's more homogenous here. So when we start putting covers, we build the aggregates, we build the biotic glues, you start having more stability of holding nutrients in place. This one will not hold nutrients in place. You can see the mosaic colors. You can see that the internal uh, nutrient cycling in that system is dysfunctional. <coughs> So Steve will be talking to you about how critical the living plant is, right like Steve? Folks, I thank you so much for having me come. Uh, it's been a pleasure and I thank the youth for coming out and helping us. I'm excited for the young. We had them come yesterday, right? And we had a couple, some of them come up and said, man, soil is awesome. <laughs> it is, once you, that's why Chris, he carries your shovel with him everywhere he goes now. He went to Walmart. I said, Chris, can I take you to Walmart? <laughs> Thank you, folks, for having me, and I hope that we continue to have uh, a great day of learning. Thank you so much.